Hey Gerard, ik zag dat jij een, een baan hebt tegenwoordig, klopt dat? Ja, klopt inderdaad. Gefeliciteerd ja. man. Ja, dank je, het was een beetje bijzonder. Een dat beetje bijzonder? Echt, nou, het was, uh, ik werd benaderd door een oud collega van me, waar ik mee heb gewerkt bij TMG. En die zei, Viel, we zoeken bij KPN, zoeken we uh, een innovatiecoach. En uh, uh, het is wel een loondienstfunctie. En toen was het, nou wat was het, ik denk februari, maart, zeg maar. En toen dacht ik, oké, okay, nou ja, de, de wereld is wel iets aan het veranderen. Maar ik wilde vooral eigenlijk gewoon, uh, in plaats van alleen losse opdrachten, ook een langere tijd ergens onderdeel van zijn en de hele flow alles meemaken. Wat dus we zijn, ook, uh, jongens, ik heb hem net live gezet op YouTube, dus praat lekker door, maar weet dat... <laughs> ja. Sorry. Maar, hij nee, maakt niet uit, maar, uh, uh, dus ja, het was gewoon een mooie kans. Ja, cool. Maar ik, ik doe daarnaast ook nog dingen voor mezelf. Ah, uh, oké. Okay. Ja. Dus uh, dat heb ik ook nog steeds. Ja, oké. Okay. Dus goed, dus laten we even een keertje bij praten dan. Maar uh, klinkt goed. Toch? Ja, yeah. cool. Ja. Ik zat dat Tron nu bij jullie zitten ook. Ja, klopt ja. ja. Die ken jij. Ja, ik ook. Ja, leuk ja. man. Mooie baas. Ja, hij is nu twee, twee of anderhalve maand, twee maanden zeilen. Even met zijn zoon mee. Oh ja, lekker. Maar uh, ja, nee, dat klopt. Ja, die. Uh... Ja, echt fantastisch wens dat. Ja, leuk. Man. Doet echt goede dingen. Ja. We hebben de mural al, uh, zie ik aard. Top. Koffiemachine. Talk. Ja, yeah. check. <laughs> I see a visiting lion. A visiting elephant. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Um, my name is Yasmin, but I think I've made a bit of a mistake because I can hear most of everything is in Dutch. That's not true. But it Sorry. was oh. just some coffee machine talk and we had some uh, old faces here, so they just went off in Dutch, but that's absolutely an uh, English session. So you're at the right place. Ah, okay. All right. Um, so just uh, first, I'd just like to just put it out there. Um, this is my first ever session. Um, I've recently moved to the Netherlands. I've done some design thinking um, with IBM, with Accenture. Um, but I've actually worked for an insurance company where they came and helped us out. And we've done some of our own um, uh, projects along the way. Um, I just wanted to really just look in and use my brain a little bit because I decided to come to the Netherlands at a time when Corona was here. Um, so Corona beat me here yeah. and um, I just wanted to, you know, see other faces other than my own at this point. Very good. Great. Yeah. You're more than welcome. Um, this, this, this is the second in series of 3D setup is we work from Zoom and I'll share my screen. Um, yeah. But I'll, we'll be also working in a mural I'll share okay. the link here. You, you're free to join. But if you cannot or do not want to uh, participate in the mural, you can also just watch my screen. I'll be sharing it shortly. And then you can see what we're doing. You, you'll get it all, but it's just less interactive. So if you want to participate, yes. um, join the mural. And if you just want to lean, uh, sit in, lean back, you know, that's all good. I'll post for the new people newly joined. I'll post the link to the mural once again. Um, okay, cool. Thanks. I have worked a mural before, but I think I'm going to um, sit this one out and just observe if you don't mind. I don't mind. No, it's all up to you. So, and you'll learn a lot uh, and any way you choose to do it. So it's, it's all good. Cool. Thanks. So, welcome. I see some new faces joining. For everybody just joined, um, I'll explain it again. Um, we'll be working while well, we have this on zoom but we have a interactive whiteboard on mural as well you're absolutely welcome to join but i'll share my screen so you'll see what's going on you can just sit in and enjoy but if you want to participate 
have it a bit more interactive, join the mural and take it from there. There you go. This is the mural we'll be using. I'll put it in the chat. Very good. Or oh, I see some lovely cappuccino appearing. I'll start sharing my screen and I want to remind you, um, we also uh, record the session uh, for people to play it back. I hope you're okay with that. Just so you know, we'll be recording Okay. If all is well, you see my shared screen. Is that right? Yeah. Good. And people who did join the mural, uh, you can see them now scrolling around, put in some coffee machine banter that's great by the way can you hear me clearly or how's my sound yeah yes we can Perfect. hear you i yep. i have this very cheap uh, clip on microphone and i think i give it a go but i think the sound is so much better than my uh macbook so <laughs> yeah. I, I yeah it is All right, um, let's get started. Maybe some people will start joining and then I'll post the link again, but everybody who wants to join the mural, this is your time to do so. The last day of the vacation, that's, that's sad. Cool, guys, uh, let's get to it. Um, I put a photo of myself there. Um, um, I'm here. Uh, this is my LinkedIn profile. I like to connect with everybody if we're not connected yet. Uh, so that, that's great. Uh, I run this one sprint company. We do product development, product management, and uh, uh, a lot of it is sprint based, not maybe all sprint from the book, but. The, the, let's say the spirit of design sprint is there in um, what I do. And this session is about sharing everything I know on re, um, remote design sprints. And it's, I think it's really good because today will be a little bit more interactive than last week. Also, I look to the uh, feedback of the session. But before we dive into, um, let's go to um, this my wish for today. Um, you can if you want to see what where I'm going, you can either click my photo in all the um, uh, between all the animal animals. I have a um, avatar there. If you click my face, you'll see what I see. So you go there. The other way is to go to the outline, which you can pop up on the top menu. And this is the number two in the outline. My wish for today. I really want to harvest some expectations. So what you want? from this session today. Let me know. Get 
Blessing time is a net. I see some new people joining. I see Erica. Good morning, Erica. I'll post the link to the mural so you can uh, interactively participate if you want. And it's, you can also just watch my screen. It's all good. Morning. Thank you. Cool. Um, all right, these are like proper wishes. Yeah, I think we'll cover most of them. Uh, but let's look back uh, at the end of the session, see if we um, uh, if you're happy, this is, uh, this is, yeah, this is good. I think we collected enough wishes. You know, the magic lamp always has three, but this is a lot more. Um, thank you, let's continue. I think the next one is number three in the outline. And I want to, for people who weren't there last time, I would just want to share my tech stack I usually use. Um, um, and feel free to, to, to put yours there. My uh, the default stack is I use Mural for uh, collaboration. I use Zoom for video con conferencing, Slack as a back channel, and to sh quickly share uh, larger files, I use Dropbox on the side. That's my standard. Uh, there. And then uh, next week, we'll discuss the um, design tools we'll be using. They're not there yet because this is uh, day three in the classic sprint. Um, and it's, um, um, there's no design that you make just yet. It's just, let's say, collaboration. So also here, we don't use um, Figma or anything like that. Um, last week, we had some fun because we, we, had, um, we identified what our sprint was about. And it was some fishy business. It, I made a kind of a recap in the blue, the big blue screen. If you want to follow me, I can take you through. We want to have this fishy business mm -hmm. where um, we want to provide new ways for people to enjoy seafood. And we thought in two years time, the most important goal, we want to have a good vegetarian fish replacement. So um, um, I kind of uh, filled that in so we have something to work with. I put a couple of, Typical sprint questions that go to the uh, plan. Can we convince people to try it? Can we convince people of the health benefits of our product? Or are people willing to pay a premium for vegetarian fish? All, um, well, important questions if you're really into the vegetarian fish market, I'd say. And then I kind of made the high level map, uh, something uh, we started on last week, but we didn't quite finish it. Um, so let's have a look. You really have the typical way you eat your um, Dutch delicacies, your fresh herring. It's a customer. Um, he goes into a, a street food stall, um, orders a herring and eats it. Um, but I branded our new fish, fish, of course, and there's at some part in the journey, he finds out about fake fish and changes the order to fake fish. And well, he eats a fake fish and saves the planet. And I, um, for us to work with this week, I said, how might we reach more customers? Which is a very generic, how might we? And I get them a lot in um, sprints I run. So I think it's nice to, you know, to, to work a bit on this, on this um, problem space. How might we reach more customers? Something. It's probably you'll see a lot in your sprints as well. Um, okay. I get a message for somebody. Yolanda, good morning. Here is the link to the mural. 
once again. Um, so please join. Um, this is largely the design sprint template made by uh, Jake, Jake Knapp, the and Steph Cruchon from Design Sprint Limited, and it's really good. So I follow it here. It's just like filled in, but it, it's 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 everything here. Uh, I included the link somewhere where you can download it. Um, it's I'll share it at the end of the session as well, so you can also you know just have the empty template. I kind of tore it apart for every week, but now, um, no, let's get to it. The first, um, last week we we said the uh, we we did the sketching phase, right? And I made a couple of drawings, and then the the next thing uh, exercise in the book is the art gallery. That is the first step in deciding which of the many solutions is best. Um, and this is typically how it looks. How I do it? I people paste them, uh, paste their solutions in here, or uh, you can have them mailed to the facilitator, and then the facilitator pastes them in. Um, but this is typically how it looks. And what I do, like I said last week, I usually cover them up with these squares, and then I would say I explain. Um, the art gallery, and then all uh, I try to, you know, lift the covers, so it prevents people from already um, diving in, and uh, it also really helps in keeping attention. Uh, if people, it's so nice to see all the solutions. So once you lift the covers, uh, the group is gone. Uh, so it's really good to, you know, uh, first explain and then uh, make it really clear what needs to be done. And this is what the same I'll do to you. For people really new to the sprint, I'll, I'll be a little bit more elaborate. The f this is the art gallery. And in a normal sprint, um, I think there's a photo upstairs. You, you, you put all the solution sketches as if it was like a photo museum. Um, you put them on the wall and people can walk by and, and they can, there's a really fast way to critique the solutions. And, the clever bit here is not to have any discussion. Um, and then to get like the knowledge, the wisdom of the crowd, the knowledge from the group, you'll start by making a heat map. And the heat map is kind of uh, a dot voting, but it's unlimited. And everything that catches your interest, uh, you should put uh, a sticker there. And if you think it's something is really interesting, so, and uh, that can also be like a little bit uh, of a solution, like you like the title or you like a special uh, wireframe or the, the text on the button or like little elements. And you, you can put your dot there. It's just areas of interest. And that's what we're going to, um, to lift from the group. Uh, if you really like it, put more, put two, put three, put, put five. Um, they're unlimited. Well, I always say that in real sprints, but of course in mural, they're really unlimited. So, and the more the better because it helps us make solutions later on. And I now wanted to do this with you. I lift the covers and I have uh, three solutions uh, there. Mm -hmm. uh, and what I always make sure um, that the um, solution they're kind of look similar. They have a title and they have some captions so that they are self-explanatory. Oh, I'll lock the, mm -hmm. I'll lock the areas so people can't accidentally move them around. The elephant here is there you go. There is a lot. So what you do now, you go over all the uh, solutions, and you place you you'll pick. You have people. Let's say, pick a dot like this, and you can say, "Oh, I really like this." Um, um, well, 
I really like this. There you go. Oh, and then. And if say I like it so much, I put two dots or even three. This is the way you do it in real life. And this, um, by uh, using these dots here, uh, mm. you can really simulate that. So I think give it a go. Um, in silence, take five minutes and I'll leave you, you know, go over each of these three solutions. Mm -hmm. Three solutions with multiple dots, is it? Sorry, come again? With multiple dots. We have unlimited of dots. Is unlimited. Or... And the more dots you place, the easier mm -hmm. your life is after this exercise because it helps you uh, make a choice. Okay, thank you. In real sprints, I give everybody like a, a, a half sheet of dots and I say, you cannot come back before it's gone. Uh, sometimes I need to say it, you know, so it's. Thank you. Yeah. How do you get uh, to make uh, the dots? Sorry, what was that? Uh, uh, as Paulus, uh, how do you uh, make the dots? You don't make them. Um, uh, as facilitator, you prepare them. It's just... Um, a little um, dot stickers, the, the, the ones you have. Uh, Where are they? Here. They're right next to every solution. And as a facilitator, I prepare that they're there. Actually, they're in the template. Is that is that clear, Paulus? Uh, yeah, but I... Uh, where, they, where can I see them? Paulus, are you working in the mural? Uh, yes, I think so. Um, what what is your animal, Paulus? Oh, an animal. Uh, oh, oh, I have. No, I'm not just a visitor, so I have to make an uh, animal then. Um, uh, how can I make an animal? No, are you working in a mural or are you just watching my screen? Um, uh, uh, both. Uh, uh, I I thought. I clicked on the on the mural, so uh, I have also a mural. Uh, okay, and there you can oh just no, no, go to mural. Okay, how? Oh, let's see. It's different. Yeah. Start now. Okay. Oh, I thought I was in there already, but it's not true. Oh, create your account. Oh, you to me. Okay. Okay, I think we we have to move on, uh, uh, Paulus. Yeah, if, right, okay. Um, I can, uh, you know. Um, um, I catch up. <laughs> yeah, and otherwise, just just stick to the Zoom. Um, if you're. Like not that familiar with um, mural, and I have some time afterwards to explain, so don't worry. Um, very well. Okay, um, I think everybody plays a fair amount of dots. That's great. Um, what do you think of it? Um, 
did you understand the uh, uh, let's say the every, all the, all of the concepts? Um, and I see some areas of interest. Um, What's really important here uh, is that the solutions are self-explanatory. Mm -hmm. And I always push people, let's say, to put on a sheet like one big idea. So don't make a uh, kind of combination mm -hmm. of, of uh, two, uh, mm -hmm. four ideas. Like we have an app and we do uh, uh, outboard, uh, outdoor um, billboards and we, um, uh, we do the cargo bike thing. Um, it's just too much. And then if your that solution is chosen, like what do you pick? So it's the solution should be like one clear idea, your best one. And if people are trying to, to jam in more solutions, just say um, if you pick the best one and if you if time allows it, put another one in. That's fine. But what every solution should be one solution. That's well kind of um, makes sense. Um, If we go to the areas of interest, uh, we see, let's say, um, the, the, there's a lot of interest on the fresh fish uh, uh, that's always in a walking distance and a lot of interest on the cargo mm -hmm. bikes. And what I normally do then is you kind of put notes to the solution where you say, um, uh, kind of explain every solution we say so um now it's easy because we um now have three solutions and it's very well simple to you know store it in your mind all three different solutions sometimes you if you have people going overboard maybe you have 12 solutions things get way mm. complex so this you should then really you know manage the information otherwise the you know, selection of which is the best idea is really difficult so the kind of making this small um abstract of what's in this sometimes messy sometimes uh, there's what's going on so make it abstract like this and put like all the outstanding ideas it really helps to put some anchor people can remember what they are <coughs> later. Oh, mm -hmm. right. like, um... And this is how I do it. As a facilitator, I go over what I see, and then I ask the group, um, for instance here, is there anything else uh, that stood out? I'd just like to say that some people have their microphones. There's quite some noise in the background. Could you maybe mute them? That's right. But I I did take a look, but I, I didn't figure out yet who it is. If you're not intending to speak, could you uh, mute your microphone? And there's a very uh, handy button in Zoom. You could um, um, you you could um, uh, mute and then press the space to to talk, and then if you Release the space bar, you're muted again. So that, that works really well. No. Very well. Um, well, thanks for sorting that out. Um, Cool. 
Um, of course, here we're a little bit on the schedule, so we don't, we won't go over every solution. Of course, you you took a look. Um, all solutions are here, and one thing I expected, I um, uh, was this one. I forgot the title a little bit, you know, on purpose. But still, you kind of got the solution. Normally, what what I see, uh, it surprised me because normally, what I see, if people are missing a title or they have like very poor uh, captions, um, you'll see you get people don't understand it. You get lesser votes, uh, and just the I, the solutions is just like kind of doesn't make a chance. Even if it's like in essence a good concept, it won't make the cut. It's not understood by the group, and you source the group. For or let's say ideas, which is the best. Um, so make sure that they're all look uh, good, understandable, have a title, have proper captions, and otherwise ask people to, you know, to redo it. Um, that's clear. Are there anything else, there anything else you do uh, for this art gallery exercise? We have V is the mall. <laughs> mm. I think okay. it explains it well, uh, Art. I think, um, yeah. I don't know what I would add, really. Cool. Well, it's straightforward, but this is really important to, uh, to do it right and to have some, you know, to create some time and rest uh, the people just you know take a time and really appreciate all these solutions um, mm -hmm. because this is about choosing where you spend your uh, rest of your attention in the week and uh, the first step you, you do it is the straw poll um, you you can go there uh, by number seven in the outline mm -hmm. or just following me uh, because the way um, you decide on the solution in the sprint, it's a it's like a two-step approach. First, you ask the group, like if it was your money, if it if you had to make a choice, um, which of all these solutions do you think would solve our uh, problems best? And then everybody uh, puts their own um, vote there, and. Sometimes I use for the straw poll, I use um, the voting mechanism in Neural because it's anonymous and you can't see the vote until everybody casted it. So there's no way uh, people can um, influence each other. There's no group think, but it gets messy. Um, you really have to explain that people now vote on a solution and not on like a little, a little bit. So you should really say like, where do you put your uh, vote and uh, make it really clear. Otherwise you have votes flying around uh, everywhere. Um, you can also just use the dots and have everybody uh, first li like in the room, you say, pick your favorite solution, everybody, and then count down three to one, uh, put your big red uh, dot sticker on your favorite solution. Mm. So that's a way. Um, I use both and both work fine. Uh, for now, because we only have three, no. Stop seeing. three solutions. Uh, I'll, I'll make a, a voting session and you can choose your favorite solution. And always before I go into a voting session like this, because it's, 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 it's this is really important. I always kind of, uh, take some time to recap uh, what are we trying to solve like what's our long-term goal we want to have like um, uh, uh, to have a good vegetarian fish replacement in two years time and we want to solve like how can we reach more customers that was how we reach customers that's what we wanted to solve and we have a couple of questions there i always you know take some time to go over them so people are really so 
uh, they're, they're really fresh on, oh yeah, what's, what was our problem space? Otherwise, it, this, this, happened, this happens often, you kind of drift away. So, um, you know, to, so how might we reach more customers? Take that in mind and then I'll start a voting session and you can vote on one of the three solutions there. Um, and of course, normally, um, and I'd like you to, to vote on one of the um, images. Right, so it's it's like one of the photos. You you click on the photo to vote. And normally, of course, everybody makes their own solution, so they have a lot more. So this one is easy. Mm -hmm. Is this clear to everybody how they should vote? Maybe some people are new to Mural to the voting system. If so, shout out. I can. I'm not clear, Art. Um, I'm in Mural, but I'm not seeing where I vote. Okay. Um, if you could click my uh, photo, you'll see what I see. And that's kind of... Um, an, I'll have an overview on, uh, on the, the three solutions. And you're, you're the rhino, uh, Erica? Um... Or, I think I'm frozen. Give me a second. Oh, that sometimes that happens. Uh, that's the best thing to do then is just refresh the browser in the browser. So, um, and then usually it solves your problems. Yeah, I see uh, new animals coming in. That's great. Um, of course, if you do real sprints, uh, you hand out real accounts. So you see names and you can, you know, jump in of people. Um, How is this for you? Mm -hmm. Erica, are you good or still struggling? Now I've refreshed a few times, but I just it seems frozen, but carry on, don't, I'll figure it out. Yeah, and otherwise, you know, we, we take some time at the end and I'll, we'll go through. Okay, Thanks. then now anti-voting session, not everybody cast their vote, but well, that's, that's unfortunate. Um, all right, so we, we have um, uh, a clear winner with six votes. It's own the retail channel. And then we have a, the number two is the, um, uh, the, the cargo bike things. And you see, um, this is what happens in real sprints as well. Mm -hmm. People uh, by accident cast votes on like dot stickers. Mm -hmm. And um, you have to like, you know, be, really, uh, be really explicit like how to vote uh, because it's basically it's two lost votes. Um, if this happens in a real sprint, I would probably have people vote again because um, it might change the uh, the outcome. Um, wisdom of the crowd. They say this is the... Um, This is the uh, where people uh, cast their most vote votes. 
Um, now, something that Jake Knapp added, uh, I never did it, uh, but it's kind of best of both worlds, then uh, to make it visual where the photos are, because you have, if you zoom in, like really, like, like here, you see you have six photos here, but it is of course not really visual, and it's all about you know, taking in information. So then, um, <laughs> I like it actually, what they now uh, say, everybody, you know, have a voting session in mural, and also put one of the... Um, uh, straw poll stickers on the one uh, where you voted. And it's maybe also a way to avoid like they did the lost votes on the dot stickers. So if you can do it, you kind of have best of both worlds. You don't influence mm -hmm. each other. You, you're not influenced by the group. And, um, um, but still you, you make it really visual where you vote. So then you say, okay, you cast your vote. Now can you, uh, you ask everybody, can you take one of the straw poll dots and uh, drag it to the solution that you chose. So the, this one is, these straw poll dots are here. You can drag it to the solution of choice. Yeah, and that, that way you make it visual because the- mm, This is relevant. Because the real selection, I already mentioned this, it's a two-step process, but the real selection is not done by the group. The real selection of uh, where do we put our money, uh, what's the best solution for everybody uh, is of course done by the decider. And this, all these dots are just to support the decider. And that's also why it's so important mm -hmm. to, to make it really visual. Um, what I would expect is that it would we have we would have three dots here and six dots here because this is the way it was voted. Um, but for now, um, it's it's all good. Uh, um, Let's say uh, this is how it looks. So you have people, um, you know, putting in um, the dot there, and you can also uh, check their names. That uh, if you go to show info, you can see this one is added by me. Um, this is a way to check if people uh, who voted on what, and you can maybe call yeah. out people, like why did you vote for this solution? Why do you think it's such a good solution for our program? I think for now, this is clear, the straw, the straw poll, and it's just um, for the decider to well, make his or her life easier, because the next step you'll do, um, you ask, um, to the decider, like, okay, let this sink in. This is what everybody would choose. And now it's your uh, turn. Which of these solutions should we follow through and um, create a prototype of? And then you, you'll have the um, uh, decider pick one of the, like the, the big start dots. Uh, and actually this is how they're in the template, but I like them to, to be like a little bit bigger. And um, the decider, this is the interesting bit. I, I'm now playing decider. The decider can do what he wants. So even though the group um, is convinced it's the owning the retail, retail channel is the best way forward. The decider can, is usually somebody high up in the organization or really accountable for the products. The CEO, marketing director, maybe the product manager, um, like really, well, owning the product. And they can choose whatever mm -hmm. they want, even if the, the group thinks of different solutions. Usually this, if this happens, it gets really interesting. and you need to have a discussion because one of the benefits of doing a design sprint is of course the buy-in you get from the group. If something like this happens, there's 
well, stuff going on that you need to discuss. Mm. So then take some time and maybe it's like a really fruitful discussion and the decider changes his mind or uh, people in the group change their mind or maybe the decider knows stuff that the group is unaware of. Well, let's say mm -hmm. the discussion was so fruitful, the decider follows suit and says, okay, yeah, maybe owning the retail channel is the best way forward. So, you know, we should go all in on um, uh, strong activation and uh, visibility in the supermarket. Well, that's, you know, then that's the solution From, you go uh, forward your with. Uh, experience, did you actually have situations when the decider went through a totally different situation than um, the rest of the group? Uh, sorry? Uh, Do you hear me now? Yeah, 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 I hear you. Yeah. So I heard, I ask uh, from your experience, did you actually have situations where the decider went for a totally different solution than the rest of the group? Um, the, um, um, the decider, uh, you, uh, I, I have to check my, yeah. sorry, my sound was kind of, uh, Sorry, Sorry, could you repeat that one more yes, time, Emilia? Yes, no problem, no problem. So Didn't you better. said, um, I, I was just wondering from your own experience, did you actually have situations when the decider went for a totally different solution than the rest of the group? And how did uh, you- Yeah, uh, I had that, um, but, but only I think uh, maybe once or, or maybe twice or something. And the thing is, um, yeah. What I I like to see it more actually because uh, what what happens more often than uh, the de de deciding uh, uh, her own way or his own way uh, is then they follow the you know the, the the they follow the group and then after the session they come back and say well I don't know if it's really the best solution and maybe we should you know also also do this other solution and then. Um, or I had a I had a chat with my management and the CEO thinks we should really do the other solution as well and then then you're in trouble. Um, so no. then basically the decider was not a real decider, right? Even he has even though he has a title, and in the company he's not the actual decider. But right? you, I, I, well, you know, you you worked in large companies, right? And you you know how it goes, and then you you you're you're there and you're. Um, that's why actually I'm asking because I'm the product manager, but I know how it works in this kind of organizations. And, and I'm thinking actually who's the real decider, you know? Yeah. Yeah, clear. If, um, if, I, I, if I see this thing, if you have like this, uh, if there's too little autonomy uh, for the decider, I always um, kind of, before I continue uh, making prototypes and testing it, I kind of have uh, let the decider, you know, and maybe even have a, a a chat with their management or whatever. Uh, just mm. the thing is, you can't really. The time is so limited. You can't make two prototypes. Um, and sometimes you can, uh, but, but so, it really depends. <gasps> I do this yeah, for food products as well, it. and their uh, prototyping is really easy. So then we just say, okay, we go with two, uh, no problem. But if you have to make like a full digital prototype, like an app or something with 20 screens, there's no way you can do two of them, right? Yeah, I get it. But I think, because I think in reality, sometimes the decider will actually need for her some time to double check with some senior management. Because like... If, if I mean, this is all to be effective. So if you think uh, uh, it's needed for your organization make some time and have so say so, okay we we decided this um now let's have lunch and or, or whatever and then uh the decider checks with uh, management and say this is the way we want to go forward is it okay and then you you can go forward um this way you don't have to throw away the work yeah clear thanks um, and remember um mm. the design sprint is a um uh, it's for startups, right? It's Google Venture created it, uh, uh, helping their startup companies. The uh, chain of command in a startup is really different than in larger organizations. So there, you have to adapt. It's, it, 
like this just work different in large organizations and how much you want to change them you you don't really change them um, by just ignoring it right and even so you, you jeopardize the sprint because what will happen if you continue uh, without this consulting if the if this is the company culture people just dis dismiss the results say oh yeah that's, that's a, that was a shit solution in a way so you know and you you did the week for nothing so yeah, accommodate yeah, for exactly. it rather than ignore it mm -hmm. yeah if clear. You... cool thanks yeah welcome um okay so we have the solution we uh we start we'll own the retail channel um and this is um this is then really a moment because you, you well you you came really um really far now right it's um uh, from all the problems in the world you picked your biggest problem uh, you you made a lot of solutions mm -hmm. you uh from all the solutions you uh picked like what's the best solution and now it's time to to test it up until now these are all assumptions that's something you have to realize and the way to crack down on it is to test it with real customers um the first step in uh, creating a prototype is to really work out all details and it's that's also why i um I take some time to be really sure what you want to make emilia um, from now on when you this is the moment you really decided there's no going back if you go back you will run out mm -hmm. of your time so you say this is the solution and how can we how can we uh, test this with customers that's uh, something you should um, come up with and that's the next exercise it's number nine in the outline um, and you can also follow me i'm looking at it now as well um I see I used two uh, ways to to kind of start up your uh, storyboards because what we'll do uh, the storyboard is down here and you basically you have like uh, if you're like like a you're making a movie or you're making a comic book you have like one screen in every box and you kind of set up the uh, the wireframes of how you of your test really that's where you like that's where you're working uh, up to and there are two ways to get there uh, and one is the aj and smart way of the uh, the story board flow where you have your matrix that does i don't have really good um, experience with it it's too complex people don't really understand it so this is more the way how it's in the book and i like it better so let me show that um everybody in the group takes one uh, box here and where the, it says name you change it to your name mm -hmm. um, and then you kind of have a very um, straightforward set of um, steps and you have to imagine um, how will we test this? And of course, this is kind of a, a, a different test than I think most of you uh, uh, are used to, because this is like, uh, how can we own the retail channel and do brand activation in a supermarket? Um, but still, um, think of it like, how do we engage with the tester? Uh, how do we test this? Uh, what do we show? Um, uh, what are the, the different uh, uh, elements that are important? Um, and make you make a little list here. So, for instance, um, uh, I'll say the tester. Um, <gasps> we ask people in the mm. supermarket if. They can spare five minutes. 
Um, I could say we ask people in the supermarket, we catch them uh, when they come in and say, can, uh, can you spare five minutes? Uh, we walk with them to the fish aisle. Um, we show the uh, floor stickers. Um, um, you know, what was the other thing, the coupon. And then we would uh, uh, we would see if they would buy the fake fish, right? That's a, that's one way of test it. Um, so we need uh, sorry sorry to interrupt. So we need to understand the above uh, the flow we have created on that basis what we are testing or it yes so the solution the solution we have is own the retail channel and that was about um, uh, everybody's eating herring in the street. So mm -hmm. that's that um, uh, channel is lost. So we are uh, going all in on the retail channel. Mm -hmm. um, uh, all uh, so we have we should have strong activation in uh, inside supermarkets. Mm -hmm. And I think it was like we had did floor stickers with a uh, in the freezer aisle, and we have some to get it really cheap. Um, uh, one way of testing it, a way uh, I can just come up with now. We ask people in the supermarkets, like, can you walk with us? Uh, we actually make um, we make uh, one aisle mm -hmm. there with the floor stickers, and we hand them a coupon. Say, uh, can you buy this? Uh, would you buy this now? Or like that. That's one way of testing it. Probably um, uh, you can think of another. So um, put it in here, and you, and then um, we select the best ways to test it ja, Bobby, ja. Yeah, hi go yeah. go re, go re. could you mute your microphone please i don't know if you can hear me okay thanks oh I, I don't hear the, the, the cracking, so that's interesting, right? I have no noise here, so. Cool, okay. Um, so, so if you want, uh, put in here um, one of the test flows of your own. Like what, would you, what, what, what should we do with our customer? to answer the questions we have. And I don't know, some people are putting things in. If you want to participate, that's fine. And if not, that's also fine. Um, Yeah, I see some really nice. Yeah, cool. Um, what I really like about um, this first step, uh, uh, you start to make things expl explicit and there's, um, you start to make things real. That and it's always good. And what you usually see, you see a lot of similar uh, user test flows, but they can be easily combined. And then you have best of um, best of all. So it's, it's really worthwhile to spend some time here. And this is one of the exercises that go faster in a remote sprint than in a real offline design sprint. So that's a bonus.
Okay. Normally, of course, you'll take a little bit more time, but is everybody done putting in their solutions? Otherwise, round it up. I'll throw away the boxes that, that are empty. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> I'll remove it to duck. <laughs> okay. Now we have five um, uh, possible ways to test it. And now you go about it for the same, uh, uh, in, in the same manner. You'll have people uh, cast their votes. What do you think is the best way to test it? Um, and what you'll see, uh, it, some things are really similar and they're easy to combine and you get fresh new ideas. Like we have this one, uh, we place someone near the fish department with some samples. We ask the customer to try the fake fish and we offer them a discount to buy it. This is really like your classical uh, promotion in store. Uh, we ask them if they would recommend to a friend. Very, very good solution and gives good result, I think. Um, and that's maybe really similar to this one from Erica. You provide a tasting table, cook up little bits of fake fish, ask people to try it, give them a coupon to buy it. Like really similar, you, you could match, take, a, take the best one there. Um, and then you have the one of uh, Gerard, which is nice. You have the triggering in front of the supermarket. You have this, uh, the swimming fish st uh, st stickers on the floor to the freezer. And then have fake fish and real fish next to each other with an explanation. That's really that's really strong. Gives the people who choose fake fish a coupon and the others too as well. <laughs> you know, you can already see how you can combine these uh, flows. Um, normally you would start a voting session. Uh, you see which one uh, floats the top and uh, combine it. And then uh, what you do is you uh, make one Test flow, you take the stickies of here, maybe um, we say the, the one of Gerard and Erica, they, uh, the, we think they're best. So um, what you'll do is, well, you make some space and you have like, you take the winning, the best um, test flow as a start and you, st you start to, um, uh, uh, expand it with a little bit of the, the, run, the runners up. You would say the one of Eric is a runner up. So we say, oh, we cook up uh, or we provide the tasting table. That's really uh, essential as well. Um, and um, we ask people to try it. We should, you know, um, uh, maybe we should put it here as well. So, so you kind of make one ultimate test flow and there you go. Now, once you have this test flow, um, what you'll do is you start to make things really, really specific. Uh, it should all be concrete how you're going to test. And um, that's the, the real storyboarding. And um, if you have like a digital solution that would, uh, a storyboard would mean making a a wireframe for every screen like the entry point how people get to your um, to your app or to your uh, to your website uh, then how you you know convert people or whatever you test this is um, of course a little bit different if you could scroll down i here is the template for the storyboard And uh, what's in the template is you have a square for, for every step or every uh, page in your uh, application. Of course, this is a little bit different, but still uh, there's a storyboard and you should 
maybe design your, uh, you should say there's a um, promotional um, a promotion material like the um, uh, the banners that you normally put uh, in a, a promotion stand like this. How does the table look like? Uh, what uh, maybe um, the floor stickers? How do how do we do them? Uh, and so on. Do we need some freezer space? All things you make concrete here and you think of now. The thing is, if you do your prototype, uh, you only have one day to create it. And so you don't have time to discuss details. All the details should, should be in here. And the more time you spend here making things explicit, um, the easier will be your prototyping day. And it's, it's really like five minutes now can save you two hours uh, the next day. Uh, then, this is one of the things I don't like about Mural. It's how you can create these kind of storyboards. And there are two ways I go about it. And this is one. Um, this is the drawing function in Mural, where you just draw like really basic wireframes and you put some text in it. Uh, it gets the point across. And, but um, what I see usually if I, they're like, I'm, I'm no designer, but if you have real designers there, is it too ugly for them to cope and they get kind of get lost in trying to make things look beautiful and mural and you can't. So so you, you should really be very explicit, explicit, like forget about making things nice. Use some icons, use some text and draw it yourself as quick and dirty as you can. I think it this could be enough for your wireframes, for your uh, storyboard. Um, but it takes some, well, some energy from your designer to leave things this ugly. Um, the other way I use is to, you know, send people uh, to kind of make titles for every step. So here we say Facebook ad, and the second step is, well, they, have, this is how the ad looks, healthy fish without a catch. And you say, learn more, and then you get to the landing page, right? And this is how the landing page looks. Um, um, maybe there's not enough to really design your prototype, but what you, the other way I do is, you know, first give titles to every step. So landing page, and then you, the next possible step would be the uh, order page. And you kind of lay out whatever you discussed in your user uh, flow right before. And then you have people offline draw it, uh, like how should the order page look? They draw manually, like pen and paper, draw the order page, make a photo, upload it. That's the other way, that works really well. Usually like sketching on paper is so much faster and then uploading from, um, into mural is really easy. So that's um, that's something I'd really consider. That can save you a lot of time. But then if you if you do it, first make all the titles um, uh, and then kind of work distributed. Let everybody pick page, uh, sketch it, upload it, and then maybe have some critique uh, so that not people are waiting or at any, uh, whatever you do, prevent that like three people start to design one page here. That's really not the kind of uh, level of detail you want. And you'll, you'll see that people just wind up in discussions. They don't produce anything. So just one page per person. And then later, maybe, you know, discuss it in the group, see if you need to change stuff. And then you can be really fast. So in this case, then we would be having, um, the, I guess, some kind of graphic on the tasting table, um, some kind of prototype design for a sticker, yeah, um, and also the the text, right? The the, yeah. I guess the the copy um, yeah. that somebody would use to, well, I guess then the trigger in front of the supermarket. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Exactly right. Yeah. 
so yeah. that we also have the text as well that people are going to say or, or, or that that's also written for the prototype. Um, normally, these kind of uh, scripts, I, I uh, let them create them uh, on prototype day because it takes quite some uh, time to get it just right. Um, but if you have like a, a, like a very, if copy is important, in this step, I make sure I have like a copywriter in the sprint as well, you know, to, to, and then here, for instance, it's a landing page, you know, you have your, well, it's, this is a landing page, but not something you can yet build. Uh, and then you just have your copywriter to say, uh, and have here, um, uh, you have your really your copy of the website um, uh, uh, put in here and um, already maybe uh, or I ask them like what's the tone of voice uh, what kind of images uh, would we have here um, and then it's 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 all directions to you know set you off on a quick start on prototyping yeah okay Um, yeah. Um, is there anything you do different here? Because this is just, of course, how I did. Is there anything you want to share? We have some time for that. So I just need to know one thing if you go on top and just. Um, in this section, what do we say? Decide, uh, decide top thing. So, where we have the concept art museum and speed critics, right? Yeah. So, in this, we have three concepts, and decider have decided on the middle concept, right? And what about the other people who have put on out number, uh, out number than them on the second con uh, on the second part of and third part of the concept, right? They have created some kind of heater. So probably the team is also interested in that concept, right? Instead of own the retail chain, right? Because we only testing in the next step, we are only testing the retail chain only, but people also kind of said that we are also interested into this. Probably at this time, decider can say, I like the retail chain as well as something from the other concept also, or the decider will say only the retail uh, chain concept, how the things work in general. I hope you get my point, right? Yeah, you, you yeah. Uh, what I understand is that you, you probably, you maybe want to mix and match uh, yeah. elements of different concepts. I sometimes yeah. do that, yeah. Um, if you, but the first thing, the first step is to, you know, because uh, th these are three concepts, right? But sometimes mm. I, I really had to have uh, like 16 concepts. It's mm -hmm. impossible to mix and match. So first you do, you you have a voting session, we, which are the, the most promising. Uh, and then if you see there can be combined, you know, you you um, you have to combine or um, it's the same with, uh, the book of this, um, I think the rumble, you have two mm -hmm. different solutions. You yes. do kind of a standoff. Uh, you, you test them both in your same uh, testing session and you ask the uh, customer, which one do you like best or which solution has your preference? So that's possible. But it's always the question, um, shall I go deep? Like have a really um, extended, prototype of one solution or do I go wide to have like a, a shallow representation of multiple um, prototypes and you can do you can do both uh, and it kind of depends on um, where you go like sometimes I had in sprints where the participants they kind of um, discovered like we don't really know what our customer wants in the first place so and so it, then we changed it to some kind of uh, exploratory testing and we made different solutions and we say like which one helps you best in your 
workflow. And that mm -hmm. was then the first step into kind of uh, redefining the company offering. But it's kind of a, well, a corner case, but yeah, that worked at that point, it worked really well. Yeah. Thank you. So that means in the design sprint, we can more depend on our business objective, right? Instead of just choosing one, we can do both the things, depend on what we can think as an optimistic point of view. So what flow, so if a hundred, so two flows are working as two edge, right? So probably we can do the rumble thing. Otherwise we'll go for only one flow, is it? Yeah, and and uh, if you have like uh, two um, solutions that you can really, uh, you know, that are really tightly fit together, you know, why not test them both? You can always uh, see if it if it works. Uh, but normally, I say just choose, you know, just yeah, because usually that's 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 the problem with these kind of companies as well. Right? Nobody yeah. dares or can make choices, so yeah. it's kind of a, a soothing experience. Right? You know, just make a call and we stick to it you know and i guess as well you need the resources to be able to to yeah. test both so because like um, it's making two prototypes so uh, uh, arranging for two uh, uh, testing sessions so um, i guess that that um, is difficult I, to achieve in one if, day if if i do that uh, well this we'll discuss it next week as well but if i do it uh, i always have like one testing session and then you present like you know you kind of at some point you need to integrate them as well or you know so. yes yes yes, yes. makes yeah. sense okay um well i guess we're getting to the end i'd like to know if you have some other questions just paste them here what i did last week i think uh worked really well uh everybody put questions on the post-its i answered them even after the session that's great um so let's you know put your questions here or if you want to discuss something else uh, go for it Oh, um, Emilia, I put the um, the link to the previous mural. I put it in um, in the Zoom here, but also in the uh, in this board. And um, yes, mean uh, this is the book I'm talking about. Thanks, Art. Found it. It's. Um, well, it's by uh, Jake Knapp. And this is really where it describes the design sprint method. And I, awesome. I did Thank this you. workshop with him. Uh, yeah. Of course, really proud. Very cool. <laughs> he is uh, he's really tall. 
he's um, that's a surprise to me because you don't see the video, but he's like, uh, I'm like 185 or so, and but he was like a whole lot uh, taller than me. I he really, I think I took a selfie at one point with him, and he had to, you know, his head, his head was cut off here. <laughs> But he's a really, a really nice guy. Yeah. Must be one hundred percent Dutch. No, he's um, he's. That's uh, his tall. That tall. Oh. <laughs> I've also I've got done... that book art, but it's got your signature in it. That's right. Mine. That's right. My, I sent it to you. Yeah. Treasured possession. <laughs> <laughs> I'm well, from South Africa, so basically everybody here is extremely tall. I'm like a little short person among everybody in the Netherlands. <laughs> Yeah, it's all the milk. That's what that's what we like to think. It's all the milk we drink. Thanks a lot. I'll see you next week then. Same time. Same time next week. Uh, I had some feedback that it works better. Um, oh, I didn't lock my. Uh, um, uh, um, <laughs> feedback uh, area if you have some time could you leave some uh, feedback on the well it's now called very cool again what did you think of this meetup? Um, one of the things I learned from um, uh, last meetup is that we made it a little bit more interactive uh, there was some so I think that's nice and also um, uh, well, last week we we covered a lot, and this was a little bit more, you know, easier. Next week will be the same. We'll have some time to go over things, and there are some questions. Um, if there's anything you want me to point out, we'll discuss prototyping, um, how to make the prototype, and user testing. If there's anything in particular you want to know, you know, put it in here, and uh, I'll uh, I'll put it in as well. I like this session. Thanks for joining. Yeah, thanks. It was uh, yeah. cool. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> cool. Okay. Thanks. Bye. 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 I will be in France, Art. So I have to see how I'm going to uh, call in. But you're in France. Yeah, I'm going on a short holiday for a week. So. Uh, uh, but the thing is, I'll, I'll put all these uh, um, uh, sessions on YouTube as well, as so you can watch yeah, them, yeah. you can replay, so it's it's all good. Yeah, of course. It's going to so, be moving by then. <laughs> so it's opening up and you're just uh, straight to France. Cool. Yeah. Well, uh, thanks. Thanks for joining. Cool, man. Nice. And maybe... Anytime soon, we catch up like uh, like in real meetup, real life because I like that as well. Yeah, and it's possible again, eh? so. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In some way. But it's still the one and a half meters, and I can kind of, kind of like have no idea how we can pull it off um, in a meetup uh, setting. So it's I looked into it, but so if you have idea. Yeah, the only thing that you could do maybe is you know, because the problem is you, when we work on the on on the wall, you always come close or you use the same uh, 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 sharpies or 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 the 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 uh, the, the post-its. But we could also do a hybrid version. So we have a, a big screen on, like a beamer with a mural, and everybody uses his laptop or to uh, to put in their uh, uh, their post-its, their stickies, but still be in the same room and have some interaction. Actually, I have a, uh, a workshop for um, like a big city, um, city, city council next week. And that's what we'll do. They want to have it like in yeah. real time, but we'll use mural uh, at the same time to, to do that. So I'll let you know uh, how that's went yeah because what I, I i did a workshop last week just in real life again with one other guy and we used a big canvas on the wall and i found out that working with that canvas because it was very detailed it was a very detailed structured process uh was much easier than on a 13 inch screen mural um 
So using just a beamer or something or a big screen makes it even easier. But the thing is that if you did it on the wall, you have to take the photos and make it digital again, you know, at home. So, uh, and of course you have the apps to uh, read the sticky notes and et cetera, but so the combination makes it even easier. So you have the benefits of, you know, just having a digital right away, but also the collaboration and the, uh, the energy that the group gives you. Yeah. I think yeah. it could be a very good combination and also the bigger screen. So it makes That's it great. more easy to watch and to, to, yeah. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so yeah, I'll look into it. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, it's the best of both worlds. Thanks, man. Yeah. And I have one question. Yeah. Before leaving. so, how do you sell your design sprint to the people? Because it's a five-day process, right? And somebody came with you that this is my problem, right? And he will say, "I need a solution." How do you convince those guys that design sprint is very important? Because in the design sprint, we generally uh, solve a smaller problem right within five days but people like in india people are looking for somebody quick solution somewhere uh, they need a solution asap so how do you convince those guys in general well um i don't really sell sprints um, mm -hmm. i do sprints but i don't sell them i sell solutions okay. like oh okay. you have a problem or you're really slow or you don't know where you're um um, where your product is going, well, let's figure it out and we can do it really fast and just your team for a couple of days, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and then you do a sprint, but the, the, a design sprint uh, is not something uh, you should sell as it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a means, not an end, right? It's something you, right. it's a method and it doesn't to solve something and you should sell what you're solving that, because that's your value. Yeah, but but in general, when you do uh, sprint, you generally solve a single problem, right? In the solution, in the product, there are multiple problems, right? So, do you do generally multiple sprint with them, or how how it works, or just get a gist in the workshop about uh, first problem, and then you will iterate on the solution? How do things work? Because product have multiple problems, not the single problem. But then sprint generally we took the broader problem and solve it right does it if i'm wrong let me know that's my thought is right that i that's how i think about the design sprint now but you the the first day of sprint is design sprint is really important to uh, single out the most um uh, the most pressing problem and you say mm -hmm. uh, you have your map and then you say uh, there the, like there are, even if you look to one products there are like uh, maybe thousand things you can improve but it's like where should we um target ourselves uh, that we that we uh, can have the, 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 the biggest result uh, mm -hmm. and that really helps to you know to to, to start focusing on one bit of all mm -hmm. your problems and then to solve right. it and, right. and if you if you go too broad uh, you'll mm -hmm. end up uh, spreading it out too thin you rather, you know, focus on one uh, bit of your problem and really solve it, rather than mm. you know try to solve it all and end up with nothing. Makes sense. The, so, it, the, yeah, please. But the focusing bit is really the power of design sprint. So get people in the room, focus on one problem, well, identify the problem, and just you know solve it, validate it, and move on. And if you really want to do something else do a sprint next week, you know, because yeah. it's, it's just a week. It's just a week, right, right. Fine. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right, thanks. Maybe I'll see you next week. <laughs> Otherwise, you, you know, you replay it on YouTube. You, you grab YouTube. your, your, your um, red wine or whatever you drink in France and <laughs> You'll have your replay. That's cool. Yeah, that will be fine. Okay. Thanks, hey, man. Thanks for joining. Bye, guys. Cool. Yes. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.